Hi, I'm Renarda Clanton Moyd. I'm a communication specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, our school system has a rich history of healthy competition and winning athletic programs. Through individual and team sports that range from football and basketball to bowling and swimming, there are numerous athletic opportunities for our 7th through 12th grade students. They get the chance to compete at their highest level while maintaining integrity, respect for their opponents, and good sportsmanship. After this break, three guests will join us to discuss Cumberland County Schools' highly acclaimed athletic program and much more on this edition of Get Connected. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Again, thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected, where we're talking with Cumberland County Schools Director of Student Activities, Mr. Leon Mack, head girls basketball coach at 71st High School, Ms. Tracy Taylor, and head football coach at Pine Forest High School, Mr. Bill Sachoka. Mr. Mack, Coach Tracy, Coach Bill, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I'm so glad you all pulled yourselves away from all that athletic stuff to hang out with me. Because <laughs> I'm totally not athletic, but I'm, I'm going to get there eventually. Now, I remember um, years ago when I was working in the Cumberland County Schools and when um, I called him Coach Carver, Coach right. Bill Carver, right. Right. was the athletic director, yes. Mr. Mack. And I remember always hearing him say, and I want to make sure I get this right, he often said that athletics are the front porch of the school. Yes, he, um, you know, he's, he's a longtime mentor of mine, and uh, he's, you know, he always, you know, uh, liked to address the athletic directors, uh, and when he states that, you know, athletics is the front porch of your school, uh, what he's referring to is that the majority of people that comes on your school campus, the first thing they see are your athletes and your facilities, wow. and sometimes that first impression is the most important impression. That's good. Now, how long have you guys been like out there doing your thing, coaching and, and building? I've been there the 18 years. 18 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, were you a student athlete? I'm, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I moved down here uh, to get a teaching and coaching job, and I've been at Pine Forest for 18 years. So I'm kind of like one of the old bucks on the, on the rain now. All right. That's good. And has it always been football? Football and track. Football and track. Mm -hmm. Great, great. What about you, Coach Tracy? I've actually been teaching and coaching for 20 years, and I was in Hope County, and, and now I've been in Cumberland County 11. Okay, and you were a student athlete, I assume, when you yes, were in school? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm from Jacksonville, North Carolina. I played at Southwest Onslo. Great athletic programs there. That's good. That's good. And this is a great program. Here, go on, Mr. Mack. Did you want to? No, I just started to say, um, you know, I've uh, been an athletic director 
uh, incoming county now for approximately 14, going on 15 years. Wow, that's yeah. so you all are truly dedicated to this. Yeah. yeah. Well, when it comes to athletics, um, it's it's dedication, but it's also a love. You know, um, everyone always states that you know coaching. It's not about you know the money. You know, it's about the love of the game and the love of the kids. You know, the love of the athletes. That's what mm -hmm. it's all about. Mm -hmm. The amount of hours that coaches put in. You know. Um, Sometimes it's 12, 14 hours a day, you know, so that's love. Yeah, and see, you know, I think a lot of times people look at what coaches do and, the, you know, the athletics is, oh, that's just something extra. But it's something that kind of builds and makes that, that child whole, correct? Yes. Right. right. It's, it's almost like a family. We spend so much time with them during the season and out of the season going to camps and, you know, just checking on their grades or academics all year long. And it, it's really, you do build a, a big bond with the children. Yeah. And, and I'm sure for a lot of the young people, you all become that second parent feel that they could, uh, the child can come and talk with you about different things that are going on in, in their lives. And yeah. Their yeah a lot of times we know a lot more what's going on with our, our players and, than some of the parents are. Wow. And they'll come and talk to you about things that they know that there's a trust level with you that as a coach you're not going to hold them against some of their decisions and they're, they just want to be used as a soundboard and that happens a lot even after they graduate which I think is the biggest compliment you can get as a coach. That's great, that's great. And you know what, I'm going to jump along and let me ask you this question. Um, what is the governing body for athletics statewide? Okay. Well, um, you know, first there's a national uh, governing bo um, body. It's called the National Federation of High Schools. And throughout the United States, uh, they are responsible for providing the uh, rules for all of the sports that we uh, generally participate in. Mm -hmm. Now, within the state itself, we have the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. They are the governing body that oversees uh, all of the high school uh, athletic programs in the state to ensure that, one, we are complying with the you know, rules of the game and also the established regulations that set by the state board of directors. And the state board of directors, uh, they are really the policy uh, makers uh, for the athletic programs. And, mm -hmm. It's been my privilege uh, to uh, serve on that board. Now I'm in my third year uh, of great. a four-year uh, service on the state board of directors. It's quite an honor. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. And what type of? I'm, oh, go I'm, on. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and um, because we're also talking about middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, middle school athletics is actually governed by the Department of Public Instruction. It does oh, not okay. fall under the High School Athletic Association. I didn't realize that. Yeah, but um, the public. The, Department of Public Instruction actually provides the rules and regulations. Uh, and those rules and regulations that's not covered by the uh, Department of Public Instruction, we then tend to refer to the high school association rules so that, you know, throughout the state, we can all uh, have some unity in how we uh, uh, handle middle school sports. But the real uh, uh, body that actually uh, oversees the middle school mm -hmm. sports is the LEA itself, that is the local school system okay. um, uh, that actually <coughs> oversees the middle school programs. Okay. And you know what, oftentimes when people talk about local sports or high school sports, middle school sports, we just tend to think about football, basketball, football, basketball. But here in Cumberland County, there's so many other opportunities. Share with us a few of those. Well, the other sports we have, girls can play volleyball, we have boys and girls golf, boys and girls tennis, we have bowling, swimming. We have many sports that, that different students can choose from. And, and a few of the sports that uh, really, we, there are activities, but we treat them as sports. You know, for instance, um, we have a tremendous bowling league here in Cumberland County. Uh, now it's not part of the state uh, 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 sports uh, uh, program, mm -hmm. but we treat just like a sports program, uh, and all of our high schools participate uh, in, bowl in bowling, and we think that's tremendous. You know, and hopefully, you know, we may, you know, uh, down the road be able to uh, uh, introduce bowling into the middle schools. But right now, it's just in the high schools. Now, are there any programs that are exclusive um, to just high schools and middle schools are not a part of? Well, um, at, at this time and for a number of reasons, but normally it has to do with the uh, number of participants. Um, uh, middle school, for instance, does not at this time have um, cross country, tennis, golf, because obviously, you know, um, lack of facility and mm -hmm. also numbers uh, and so forth. 
But each LEA uh, has the latitude to establish whatever sport they would like to have at their middle schools. So a lot of time you're looking at numbers and you're also looking at finance um, because our middle school programs, you know, all, we have to finance them. Um, but that's something I think we'll discuss later on in the program. Okay, all right. <laughs> Did you want to say something? No, Bill? I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> now I know that, Tracy, you mentioned, a, you know, a little earlier, girls tennis, girl, right. but okay, like for instance, sports for girls. Are there any other specifics? I know, what about cheerleading? That's what. We have cheerleading and, um, you know, um, North Carolina has, High School Athletic Association does not really honor cheerleading as, as a sport. However, Cumberland County Schools does and, and right, it is a yeah. sport. Um, and we have very, a lot of um, competitive cheerleading teams. My school, for example, 71st is very good at cheerleading. They go to competitions at different places on the weekends. And, like the, the tumbles, the flips, lifting the girls up in the air. And you have to be very athletic to be able to do oh, that. Oh, yes, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a Actually, doubt. Actually, one of my basketball players also the captain on the cheerleading team, Courtney Ross. She does a wonderful job. So now how does she cheer? Is she cheering during basketball season? Well, practice-wise, she's just basically running in and, and getting ready for our practice because cheerleading is after school and we practice a little later. But basketball-wise, she plays in our game and gets dressed and then comes out and cheers for the men's game. That's good. That's good. That's a good. That's a good thing. I applaud her. Now, are there any um, opportunities for students with disabilities? Yes, um, obviously. <laughs> they all looked at you. Yeah, they both looked at you, Mr. Mack. Yes. Um, now, obviously, one of the things that you know we pride ourselves on is trying to ensure that we are as inclusive as, as we can be with all students, whether they have disability or not. Uh, I think one of the uh, uh, um, uh, great stories is the young lady that was at Jack Britt who played volleyball. You know, she had a prosthetic leg, and uh, mm -hmm. um, yet she was able to be all conference. I think she was all region also, mm -hmm. and went and uh, went on to participate at the co collegiate level. So, um, yes, we do. Uh, um, look to be inclusive with you know uh, students that have disabilities. I think the primary thing that we always have to understand is that uh, one, we have to take in consideration safety, not only for the student with the uh, disability, but also the other students that are participating with that student. Mm -hmm. um, and then at, uh, at the same time, we have to ensure that um, by rule, uh, there cannot be any type of mechanical assistant that would enhance the student's ability to participate in the game. For instance, you know, you cannot have a student with artificial uh, foot, you know, mm -hmm. out there kicking a the football because, yeah, you know, they may cost. give them an unfair advantage, you know. <coughs> but besides that, uh, if they are able to participate and it's safe, they are more than welcome to do so. That's great, that's great. And you know what, I often think about safety measures as far as what we're doing to make sure our young people are safe. And oftentimes during the summer, I'm riding by high schools. You can see Coach Bill, he's looking like, oh, this was for me, I can tell it. <laughs> You'll see the students out there and I'm like, oh, it's hot for me, I know it's hot for you. So what are some, uh, what are some safety measures that we're, we have in place for our students when you know, we have hot days and, and those types of things? Well, one of the biggest things that they've done and we've done at Pine Forest, even with Mr. Mack with the Cumberland County, is we stress practicing in the morning. Okay. Um, in fact, since we've done that, uh, it's been pretty good for the kids. To, it's tough enough for them to get through the heat, uh, but we're not killing them. Um, the other aspect, too, is our athletic trainers. Um, if they tell me I can't practice, I don't practice. Okay. And a lot of times we have uh, two certified athletic trainers, Byron Shulk and Marsha Roberts, and they're standing out there with a little meter. Mm -hmm. It's called a wet ball meter. And it could be 85 degrees out, but that humidity's high. And if it tells me if it's up to, I think, 82%, we can't do anything. And we literally walk off the field and got to cancel practice or finish it up or adjust to where we give them more water, or have them take their equipment off. But for us, practice in the morning helps us get through that because from 11 o'clock to 6 o'clock, it's unbearable out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have uh, you know, state guidelines um, and also local guidelines that address uh, safety uh, for our athletes, especially during the summer uh, month, and that's what uh, Coach is referring to. Um, you know, one of our policy is that if the real temperature uh, reach 105 and that uh, um, everything shuts down, you know, right. no matter what, you know, um, uh, and then they have to move inside. You know, if there's air inside, if there's no air inside, 
the same thing applies. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, with, with the guidelines, and you know, obviously with all of the things that has occurred, you know, over the past several years with the loss of a, uh, of an athlete, you know, um, you know that's you know, obviously our number one priority is safety. You know, and I came aboard. I know one of the things I, I stated in that is, uh, you know. I cannot lose an athlete on my watch, you know, right. so we're going to do everything we can to ensure the safety of those athletes. And, you know, we also try to ensure that the parents understand that, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, even though on our uh, participation forms and when our athletic directors speak with the parents, you know, um, they are told, you know, athletes, it's athletes there's always that risk of injury, you know. Exactly. I mean, we can't change that. However, we're going to do everything we can to, one, minimize the risk. But if that injury occurred, then we will try to ensure we uh, address it as quickly as possible. Okay. All right. You know what, when we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to ask a few other things about safety measures, okay? So you all sit tight, right? Right. You're not right. going anywhere, right? Not going anywhere. anywhere. All right. I'll okay. think about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. All right. Don't go anywhere as well. Stick around for more Get Connected. too early to start reading to your kids. There are amazing possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. In case of an emergency, if, if I'm at work, I'd probably call, I, I would call my wife right away. Well, unless, of course, there's no cell service, and, you know, then I'd if our cell phones didn't work and the land phone didn't work, the landlines were down, and that's a good question. What do you do? So, April, yeah? your charger's still using energy. That's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Cumberland County Schools Director of Student Activities, Mr. Leon Mack, Head Girls Basketball Coach at 71st High School, Ms. Tracy Taylor, and Head Football Coach at Pine Forest High School, Mr. Bill Sachoka, and we're discussing Cumberland County Schools' highly acclaimed athletic program. Now, you know, when we went right before we went to the break, we were talking about some safety measures that are being taken in our schools to keep our athletes safe. We had um, we briefly discussed um, the use of. Um, the AED. A, well, no, we, well, I want to talk about that one. Well, let's right. just go on and jump into that, using the defibrillators. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, um, one of the requirements we have in Cumberland County is for all of our coaches um, to be first responders. So they have to, you know, take CPR, uh, first aid, and also train on the uh, AED, which is the uh, defibrillator. And uh, Mr. Sh Coach Shelka, he probably can address it more so since he has it's to actually, go through the it's training. It's actually a pretty easy system the way they have it set up. It's um, yeah. fairly easy to use. We have to uh, use it not only on, the, on adults but also for uh, infants as well. So we're certified as all the way through and that's every coach. The other thing too is we also have to take a class online dealing with uh, dehydration and rehydration great, of student and athletes. Uh, it's usually about a 30 to 40 minute um, online course we take and with the emphasis on concussions, we also have to take an online class with that as well. Yeah, and you know what, that's what I wanted to talk about as well, because I know that's really, you know, heavy in the news right now, concussions and, and athletes having those and, you know, us not having, you know, someone on the sidelines to kind of help with those types of situations, but sending that child back out into the game. Mm -hmm. Where, what are we doing here in Cumberland County? Well, every coach is, has to take that course. In fact, when you come in as a new coach in Cumberland County, a volunteer paid. You have to go through an eight-hour class with Mr. Mack and other AD, uh, athletic directors, and then you do an online class 
just for coaching alone. It's just we're not, even, we're not talking about X's and O's. We're talking about how you treat your kids, the fundamentals of coaching, uh, your demeanor, how to deal with parents. And it, with that course is the added course with the uh, concussions and also the hydration. But from the standpoint of per, uh, concussions, the states also included that even the referees have the ability to stop a game, take a kid out if they suspect him having a concussion. Right. And then they have to sit out, they have to be evaluated by the athletic trainer. Uh, I use my athletic trainers and our team doctor. And they, they know more about it than I do. And if they tell me no, then that's they don't what go it in. means. And what's really interesting is you think it back about when, when I played concussions. I mean, I had two concussions where I was knocked out. Really? Now, today, we know that if a kid has a slight headache, nausea, those things are signs of concussions. Ten years ago, that wasn't even an issue. I mean, you would never thought of that as being a condition. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely being proactive. Parents are being taught by way of the school system what to look for. Because right. when a kid goes home, a lot of people think that if it happens then, it's over. It's over. And but you, a lot of times it, it, it can happen. I had one player, it took three days. Um, he got hit on a Friday night. It wasn't until Monday they actually realized he had a concussion and he wow. was out for two weeks. Yeah. And, and I think the key um, also is, uh, as Bill mentioned, and that is parents. Uh, we had a situation with a young middle school student. You know, a lot of times, you know, students out on the field, they're getting hit. You, you, you may not see it, and they don't want you to know that they was hit because they want to play. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, uh, when the parent and the child go home, because the parent had received the training at the school and also the information how to recognize concussions, she saw that uh, he was acting very strange, and so they took him to uh, the, the emergency room, room and ahead. sure enough, he did have a slight concussion. So it, the key to concussion is everyone needs to understand uh, the symptoms and how to recognize them. Mm -hmm. you, we cannot prevent concussions, but what we, is so important is that we have to be able to identify uh, whether a child has a concussion or not. And then also in place before they can go back on the field or participate in the athletics, if they were referred, they have to have a doctor's release before they're allowed to even go back to practice. That's great. And you know what, I was about to ask that because in my mind I'm thinking, you know, I was listening to an NPR interview where um, the mothers that are there at practice will, if a child has a concussion, that one particular mother will feel the need to call another mother and say, hey, did you know that you're, because mm -hmm. the coaches were not making the parents aware of what was occurring during the practice. Well, I think that's also right. a big part of it is, is the coaches, um, I have to say the old school type of coaching, getting on the mentality that you can't just tell a kid suck it up anymore and you don't know what you're talking about right. because, you know, we know now the research that that little headache or that, you know, upset mm -hmm. stomach it could lead to something serious. Okay. Um, and the other aspect is from the standpoint of um, um, parents and coaches is the communication part. And a lot of times, and kids themselves, they won't tell you as a, as a coach or even a trainer and then mm -hmm. you don't know about it until, unfortunately, 48 hours later. Exactly. Yeah, Renata, actually earlier this year in one of our games, uh, one of the young ladies got hurt and the amulet, she left with the amulets and with her parent and it was a week before we got her doctor's note before she could practice or play. So I think the parents are very aware of it and mm -hmm. the coaches are doing a good job in Cumberland County making sure they follow what the procedures are. That's great. That's great to hear. Now, you know what, I want to shift gears with you guys for a minute mm -hmm. and let's talk about something that's um, kind of going on right now, you know, as far as the athletic um, program is concerned. Tell us a little bit about the, the new grade point average requirements and uh, you know as far as participation is concerned. Okay well um, at this time it's uh, basically in the implementation phase. Uh, um, we're looking at uh, uh, um, uh, implementing in the school year 2014-15 and um, the focus will be on uh, uh, student expectation, student achievement. You know we have an expectation that you know, all, our, uh, of, all of our students should at least be able to have a 2.0 um, GPA and I think one of the great things our school system is doing, a lot of school systems in the state have a GPA requirement but we are also requiring our middle school um, um, athletes and extracurricular uh, participants to have uh, a 2.0 also. And there's some concerns, you know, yeah, um, in the community mm -hmm. uh, about the uh, GPA. And I'm quite sure the coaches probably can share some of those concerns, you know, okay. and, and I, pros and cons. I think it's a good idea initially because one of the things as being a uh, high school football coach you know, for 18 years, what's very frustrating is when you see a kid has a God given talent 
to maybe use that to get a scholarship to play at the next level. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at their grades, they don't have the grades to go. Right. And so it kind of puts the issue where with a 2.0, it gives them at least a decent foundation to start out. Um, my only concern is the, the communication part, that a lot of times when ninth graders come in, particularly with, with them going from the middle school to the high school and the schedule, they go from an eight period day, uh, seeing their teacher every day to uh, you know, four classes a semester, they are, there's a lot thrown at them. And you look at their grades, they traditionally come down as a ninth grader. And once those grades go down, it's very difficult to get them to back bring up. Back, right. So we have to do a really good job of making sure parents understand that that one semester that, you know, if they get a D, could really jeopardize in playing a sport, you know, the following semester. So that's important. I also think that we have to take a look at it. You know, if a kid gets a, a D in one class and he gets below a, a 2.0 for the semester, you know, but he might be a 3.0 student overall, how we're going to adjust to that in terms of, you know, is it really fair to let him sit out for a semester, but he does have a 3.0 overall. So mm -hmm. I think that's also a concern that we're going to have to to address, to address as, well. as the you know the policies being written right Tracy, and, did you and want to well and I agree with Bill you know it's very important that our young people understand that you know first we're at school for academics you know it's great for sports and you know as coaches and athletic director we love sports but it's important that they're lifelong learners and and that we set that education is very important and that they are making good grades Mm -hmm. And you know what, when you mention good grades, I also think to myself about a lot of our students who are, you know, achieving and whatnot and they have right. those talents are going on. We have quite a few that receive scholarships and things of that nature. Talk to us a little bit about that. It's a, it's a very interesting process. Uh, first, usually when a college coach comes in and recruits, they're going to ask me three questions. Does he have good grades? Does he have good character? And is he somebody that you could count on? And most cases, if one of those answers are no, they're not going to take a risk on a kid. Mm -hmm. But they never ask about whether they could play. They know he could play or not. But those three things are most important, particularly the grades. Uh, it's, again, I, I reiterate, it's just really amazing the talent level we have in Cumberland County and, and how much more we need to stress grades because there are a lot of great athletes that could have the ability to go on and play at the next level. Okay. You know, and with the grades, kind of back on with Bill, you know, we have the children, the athletes that do well in sports, and, and you just don't want to, you know, waste their time when you're out there and they're playing and, you know, when they sit down to take their tests, their entrance exams again in college, and it's just so unfair to them that they spent so many hours in sports and, mm -hmm. and that person that's, you know, helped them along wasn't making sure that they had good grades. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, that's our role, that's our job as well, oh, to okay. ensure that they're paying attention in the classroom and they're making good grades. You know, so they can pass their SAT and, and have that GPA to, to accept that money that someone's trying to give them to go to school. And I must give credit to our coaches. Uh, I think they are doing a great job of, you know, always stressing the importance of grade and trying to prepare them uh, for that next level. Um, if you look at uh, our overall uh, our student achievement as far as those students receiving scholarships, Every year, you know, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars of athletic scholarships right. that's awarded to our athletes. Uh, this year alone, you know, we probably have over 20-some football players <coughs> who have, you know, committed, signed letters of intent mm -hmm. to play at the next level. And as you know, nowadays, with the cost of education, yeah, I mean, that's a blessing to parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're, we're really proud of what, what's happening right now with our student athletes and academics. That's great. And that speaks volumes about your athletic program. Thank yes. you. Uh, you know what, I'm looking at the clock on the wall and it is ticking down and you all are off the hot seat. I want to thank you so very much for joining us and I have to have you back, okay? Okay, okay. Well, pleasure. Thank all you. Right. All right, okay. All right, well on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time.